Many great travel stories are set in this city. This is the story of three travelers, Emma, Katie, and Arizona, American college students from the University of Kentucky who are spending the semester living and learning here. Hi, how are you? Got it before the sunrise today, and it's okay, like really pretty and calm in the mornings. Everything is so diverse, and there's just so much to do. This is Transformative Travel, exploring London. Nearly 20 million tourists visit London each year to experience the city's community, culture, and character. The city is home to some of the most iconic tourism attractions in the world. Here's the famous bridge, not London Bridge. This is Westminster Bridge, situated next to the Parliament and the Elizabeth Tower, which houses Big Ben, currently under renovation. Westminster Abbey, where royals get married. Not on the guest list? Then just buy a ticket for a tour or get in free during any number of church services held every day. The Buckingham Palace, the Queen's House, the Queen's Jewelry Box, the Tower of London, an official royal palace. It was once an armory, a mint, a jail, a torture chamber, even a zoo. Now it's a museum visited by nearly three million people a year. London Bridge. No, that's Tower Bridge. This is London Bridge. The Romans first built London Bridge 2,000 years ago. It was London's only bridge for 1,600 years. Tower Bridge is much more impressive. 40,000 people drive on, walk over, or cycle on it every day. The National Gallery, St. James Park, the London Eye, Chinatown, Trafalgar Square. But we're going to show you none of these. Instead, we explore parts of London not as many visitors see, places and experiences that are transformative for my group of explorers. I'm Dr. Jason Swanson, a professor of tourism at the University of Kentucky. A couple years ago, I loaded up a bus with 10 University of Kentucky students, and we traveled for a week, learning about communities, cultures, and characters in Western Kentucky. That was Transformative Travels, Exploring Kentucky. One of my Kentucky travelers, Arizona, is now joined by Emma and Katie on a semester-long education abroad program in London. They explore not only London and other parts of Europe, but also learn about themselves and how they view the world. So we're here on an exploration with uh, Dr. Jason. We're looking pretty good here. Okay, Arizona. I'm Arizona, I'm from Vincent, Ohio. I'm a sophomore studying merchandising, apparel, and textiles at the University of Kentucky. Hey friends, what's up? I'm Katie from Detroit, Michigan. I'm a freshman at the University of Kentucky and my major is merchandising, apparel, and textiles. Super like cultured and just really strong. accomplished and strong right now. <laughs> I'm Emma. I'm from Long Island, New York. I'm a sophomore at the University of Kentucky studying hospitality management and tourism. I've always just been an independent person. Like I can just do my own thing. Like I don't have to be around people. I don't have to like rely on people. Don't tell my mom, but I'm traveling by myself right now. I think as soon as I got here, we kind of just jumped in. And here, like this is the first time that I've actually traveled. It was the first time I left the country. And like you can keep saying no to things. Like when are you ever gonna actually do them? I'll have to hold it there for just a second. While in London, they take my class called Transformative Travels. In my class, we learn about how travel can change how people view themselves and the world around them. Travel can be a source of challenge and inspiration as travelers learn about the destination and themselves along the journey. They are also taking a variety of other classes through Arcadia University's London Center and living in student housing provided by Arcadia. We dabble in schoolwork here. <laughs> One of the classes I'm taking is like an intro to British cinema. I'm also taking a marketing class, which I think it's cool because I think it's structured very differently than it would be back at like 
University of Kentucky. In general, the class that we're taking, like transformative travels, is so key to our experience here because it's helping us reflect like so much more on being in London and going to all these different places that we've been this past semester. And I think just the impact it has on our mindset and how we're processing things is huge. Just thought I'd give you a little look into how we do our homework very late at night seems to be a trend. We're currently hosting um, a group from the University of Kentucky um, and uh, we're hosting them here within the center. Uh, they are making use of our teaching facilities, delivering a couple of classes, uh, Kentucky classes, and then our students are taking uh, some of our classes alongside of those, uh, specifically focusing on international education and the opportunity for students, both Arcadia students and students of other institutions, to study abroad. Take them to places that they wouldn't necessarily go on their own. So today we're out and about in London and we're trying some different coffee shops. Um, this is the second coffee shop we've tried today. So I'm here with some people and we're just sampling the drinks and everything. Then we do uh, excursions out of London, Stonehenge and Bath, Oxford, the type of places that students would uh, always like to go be on students' hit lists, bucket lists. We are here at Bath and we are at the Bath <laughs> here in the background. This place is going to rock. And then we do a European trip each semester as well. So we've just come back from Athens. They live with other American students in London's Highgate neighborhood. Princess Elizabeth House is gorgeous because it's in Highgate, which is the kind of area that all Londoners want to live in. It's got a lot of bars and restaurants and shops and things, so they kind of get that real experience of being Londoners and commuting um, rather than living in a massive kind of what feels more like student accommodation. While I lead the Education Abroad program for the University of Kentucky, my wife Ellen, a professor of mathematics at Center College in Danville, Kentucky, leads an education abroad program of her own. Center in London is a spring term study abroad program. We've brought 34 students with us this term. I am teaching Introduction to Statistics, which is the typical statistics class that we normally teach on campus, but we're using London as our laboratory. And so we're coming up with examples around London. The students are doing projects based on the British culture so they can get to know it better. And then the other class I'm teaching is Mazes, Castles, and Codes. And we are really just trying to see math everywhere. Ellen and I are not alone. Our son and daughter, four-year-old Peter, and six-month-old Eloise are with us for the adventure. London's been amazing for kids. Some people might say we're crazy. We are. <laughs> <laughs> we temporarily uprooted our family to come here. One, one of the reasons why we wanted to do that was to give them to give them this experience also. And I think it's important to uh, travel with your, your kids and show them even if, uh, even if they're really young and maybe it's really hard for us sometimes. But This is our time with them as kids as well. Mm -hmm. And so yes, they may not remember the details of London, but this is our lives. We will remember these experiences. Yeah. But it's also good for the students to see that life doesn't stop when you have kids. Because so many people say, oh, I don't want to have kids because then I can't do this anymore. Yes, you can. We've had opportunities to take the kids along on a little bit, and we've seen the students interact with them. It's been pretty cool. It's a lot of fun both ways. One, it's fun to have Peter and Eloise have these role models. Peter is so cute. Students who are exploring the, this new place just like them. I just think it's super cool so how he's experiencing this just like we are. I hope that our kids can grow up to be like some of these dynamic individuals that we're traveling with. Will you hang out with us again? Yes. And it's not just about our family. Arizona, Katie, and Emma enjoy visits from their families too. So I'm at Gatwick Airport. I just picked up my Hi. sister. Um, she just arrived after a long flight. Emma's sister Clara arrives in time to join us on our canal boat tour. I really enjoyed my mom being here because she had never been out of the country. She's been to like Canada, but never like flown overseas or anything like that before. So I was really happy that I like got to share that experience with her. My mom, my dad, and my two brothers visited also. 
So what was it like to have them visit? Did it make it feel more like home here? It did because they brought their chaos with them. There was not a dull moment. <laughs> so still exploring London. Today I'm out. Um, I'm at St. Paul's Cathedral. You can see it. I mean, it's super pretty. We're going to go in now and look around. Um, I've never been here before, but I just keep hearing about how amazing and famous it is. But today I have the pleasure of being joined by my um, wonderful family. And she just talked about how like it felt so surreal to her to be like flying kites at the top of the hill looking out at London because she loves Mary Poppins and she loves the movie Saving Mr. Banks. And so she just said it was so nice to see her family out there flying kites in London. Emma and her sister Clara take a quick trip to Paris to sightsee and to explore a family connection. As you sweet by Amazon for a visit to Paris. So we're going to Paris. It's going to be a short visit just for a day, but my sister has been here visiting for the past few days, and our grandfather spent some time in Paris when he was growing up because um, his parents had a textile business there. So he spent some of his childhood there, um, and he always shares stories of all the naughty things and all the trouble he would get into at the playground by the Eiffel Tower and everywhere. So. It's just really cool to be able to go and like see where he got to spend his childhood and maybe find some of the places he talks about in his stories. A few weeks prior, Emma phoned her grandfather to hear reminders of those stories of his life in Paris as a young boy. You walk down to a, like a traffic circle and you crossed over that bridge that leads to the Eiffel Tower. I would walk across the bridge over to the Eiffel Tower. That was their final conversation. Last night we actually got a call that our grandfather had passed away. So this trip is even more meaningful now. So we took all of the stories that he shared with us growing up and all of the memories that he had of Paris. And we think that we found the bridge that he remembers walking over. We're on the bridge now to the Eiffel Tower. He remembers walking over it as a child and playing at the playground near the Eiffel Tower. So this is the bridge and it just means a lot that we've been able to find it. He described the traffic circle that's over that way, um, and he said that his apartment was somewhere at the other side of the bridge. And so it's just really cool to be able to see these places that he always described to us. An important part of any semester-long education abroad program is to adventure to seek new experiences while traveling. Arizona, Katie, and Emma do that well. So I'm in Scotland right now. So we are in Barcelona. We are here at Bath. I'm right outside Amsterdam right now. We're here in Paris at the Eiffel Tower. So we are in Amsterdam and this is where we have been sleeping this past weekend. Just arrived in Cardiff, Wales like a few hours ago. So we are going to Iceland this weekend. We're at the top of the church in Reykjavik. Can't pronounce the name of it because I don't speak Icelandic, but it has a beautiful view out the window. So we're in Greece. Look at the Mykonos. <laughs> so still in Dublin today. Um, we're on a hop on, hop off tour. We're in Monte Carlo. Yes. So we love Monaco so far. It is absolutely and incredible. incredible. Here I am eating coffee flavored gelato in Florence. Uh, we just got to Barcelona a little while ago. I went to Poland because me and my friend wanted to see Auschwitz. Um, and we went to Amsterdam um, just to see it, but also a big part of that trip was to see the Anne Frank house. So because I was raised Jewish, I definitely, um, like planning those trips, I knew they were going to be impactful and really meaningful. Um, we were standing in Auschwitz to Birkenau, and there was like a group of clearly like Jewish people standing there, um, very religious, with some Israeli flags, and they were all just standing there saying some prayers. And it was just like really real for me because I stood there and I was like, this really is where like all these people were murdered for like being Jewish, like this, the thing that I have in common with them, like the religion, that, and that was so crazy for me. I think it just makes me want to um, be even more proud of it and like pass it on even more to future generations and just like keep it, keep the faith strong. But you don't have to leave London to find interesting things to do. 
We hire the Angel 2 of Islington, a 72-foot-long narrowboat, for an interactive cruise along the Regent's Canal. The Regent's Canal, built in the early 1800s, cuts an 8.6-mile swath just north of central London. The Angel 2 is operated by a nonprofit charged with providing transformative experiences on the canal for community groups in London's borough of Islington. I think my favorite part about that was your excitement about driving the boat. Like, you were so excited. When can we drive the boat? Yes, it was so good. It's not hard. No. Well, you wrecked. I did it. Yeah, I did wreck. Ah, it's okay. That's why they build them out of solid steel. So the tunnel in front is just 200 years old this year. Um, and it's kind of uh, the first kind of successful tunnel built, really. We are in a cave right now. It's tunnel! tunnel. <laughs> no, we're in a cave. <laughs> it's freezing. Uh, these gates are called mitre gates because of the shape of them. It's only the water pressure that keeps them closed. There's no locking device on them. And they were designed by a man called Leonardo da Vinci. Yeah, it's interesting as well. It's a very pleasant way of wasting an afternoon as well. Oh, yeah. The student travellers also get the chance to meet professionals in the fields they are studying. Emma, a hospitality management and tourism major, spends some time with a certified tour guide and educator while taking a mudlarking tour during low tide on the River Thames. Okay, everybody, if you gather around. So, welcome. You've all come to do some mudlarking. So you can pick things up, we can identify them, but we cannot take them away. When we get to the bottom, I have some identification sheets for the pottery that will help you. When the tide goes out, London's history rises. Brilliant. Off you go. During the 18th century, Londoners who scavenged the river mud for valuables were known as mudlarkers. Modern day treasure hunters still get this chance by taking a mudlarking tour. Occupation starts with the Romans, so we've got 2,000 years of occupation right here. By the 1700s, it said you can get across the river without using one of the bridges. You can step from ship to ship to ship. The river just gets busier and busier. Emma's not only studying tourism, she also works as a tour guide at the University of Kentucky. I really like meeting all the families on tour and talking to people and finding out their reasons for looking at each school. So what do you expect to see on this tour? Um, I'm not really sure what to expect. <laughs> I'm just excited to keep seeing um, London from different points of view and keep experiencing all the things that the city has to offer. So we found this we were walking around and it just stood out to us because it was such like a large piece. What do you think? Is it anything significant or? Okay, so this is a piece of Tudor pottery. Okay. Um, probably from a large platter or something like that. And it's Tudor because of the color of the glaze. London or Londonwick was the ideal place to control trade into Europe but also across into the centre of Lower England. If um, the Vikings and the Anglo-Saxons thought of the rivers of Britain as like a tube map, that they could portage between them, but they could get around quite quickly using all the rivers. So the most important aspect of a good tour is a good story. You've got to have a story to keep people going. So at the beginning, I gave you the story of the settlement of London. Just highlights. If you put your fingers down, you can actually feel the fingerprints of the person that made it. So not a king or a queen, an everyday person living in London 500 years ago. So I'm still new at the whole tour guide thing. And yeah. I still find myself getting kind of offended when people are like bored or like, you know, they're not really engaged. How do you deal with that? Because I'm sure like not everybody can be interested in what you're talking about. No, so you throw in jokes. You make yourself the butt of the jokes <laughs> um, quite often. 
um, and you accept that some people are there because someone else in their group is fascinated. So they're there is support. Don't take it personally. You just have to push it away and go, whatever. Always, I always look back and go, what could I improve? Could I tell that story differently? Could I make something else funnier? But knowing your subject matter very well as well. This is everyday Victorian pottery that, you know, the blue stuff's for Sunday best. This is for every day. I've done education abroad a few times before. One thing that I like to see is how their perspectives change and they see, their, they see the world in a different way and they see themselves in a different way. To see how they are experiencing new things and becoming more adventurous and more confident in a new place. A lot of our students say it makes them more independent and I think it makes you, it makes a lot of students sort of realize their own potential but also their limitations. It takes their familiar environment shifts it three or four thousand miles away. So they're having to adapt to, to the learning experience. But all of those sort of cultural aspects of adaptation are a huge part of what they do. And it allows them that opportunity to learn and grow. And apart from the things, it's just fun. You know, it's such a, a lot of students that, I've, that I have here are from the US and they're very well traveled within the US because obviously it's the same size as <laughs> it's kind of Europe. Um, but they've never been out of the US and they'll come over here and they'll go to 10 countries while they're here and then go home again and that's, you know, that's just such an experience. This is the last leg of our spring break travels. And I think that I got a lot more self-aware of what I want to do in the future and just how I want or how I see myself living in the future. Back at the Dior exhibit. I love all of these dresses. I would wear every single one. And just the fact that if I lived in a, a different country for three and a half months, you know, I can do just about anything. And I just, I, that like idea always follows with me, like just an overall idea that I did something that not everybody gets the opportunity to do. I'm very thankful for that. And I can just take that with me with everything else that I decide to do. Also, you can see the London Bridge and the Tower Bridge. Easily confused, people like to call the Tower Bridge the London Bridge. I got to do so many things for the first time. It was my first time being out of the country and going to so many new places and trying so many new cuisines and just so many amazing things that I don't think I ever would have had the opportunity to try. So all of that has really stuck with me and kind of like Arizona said, it inspires me to like push myself to try more new things and experience more new exciting things for the first time. So we got online and we are going to be visiting the House of Parliament now. We're going to be visiting the House of Lords. We're just going to get to see everything. It's so beautiful in here. I was just so in awe of how cool the opportunity to study abroad really is. And I like really am thankful for the University of Kentucky for providing me this outlet. And just how cool it is that I've been able to go to France, to Amsterdam, to Barcelona. We are in Barcelona last day and we just had an experience and a half, if you will. Just all these places and like live in London while I'm still 18 is just so crazy to me for some reason. And it's just showing me that I'm capable of so much. On the next episode of Transformative Travels, Exploring London, I talk with <laughs> Center College and Arcadia students about why we don't see more men studying abroad and Katie, a merchandising apparel and textiles major, finds herself in some of the world's most iconic retail locations and makes new lifelong friends. Next time on Transformative Travels, Exploring London. How did Dr. Swanson convince you to spend a semester in London? He made it really easy for me to come on this trip. I don't know about you guys, but like just where I was with credits and everything, it didn't look like education abroad was gonna happen for me. But he sat down with me, he spent so much time like talking to different people and talking to my parents to reassure them. Like he did so much to make it happen for me and I'm really grateful for that, to have this opportunity. Yeah.
deep down, right from the beginning, I was like, I know that I'm gonna end up doing this, which I think is because he was the one who had reached out to me. If it was some other random professor that I didn't even know who it was and I'd have to meet up with them or whatever, I would have been like, eh, hesitant about it. But because he was like so open to saying like, here, do this, like come with me, come here, you know. He made it so easy for me to go on this trip as well. I remember so well, I was sitting in my merchandising class two weeks into my freshman year of college, and he comes in to talk to my class about what he's doing. And I was like, I'm going. Like, I was like, all right, I'm in. Like, didn't even look into any other study abroad programs. Had never seen Dr. Swanson before. As soon as he stepped out of the classroom, I emailed him, and I said, hey, can freshmen do this? And he was like, sure. He just made it so easy for me going through education abroad, the education abroad office, and all the people I had to talk to, like sending up emails, sending me scholarships to apply for, and just like getting me here as a freshman in general is so, like I'm so thankful for that because I could not imagine the semester going any differently than it has, and I'm just so thankful that he's the one here. And like I said before, just having that personable connection with the professor now is making me so excited to go back to the UK next month.